Can I transition to to efficiency and talking about electric cars for a second? Yeah, because baby. we have a little bit of news that is pretty cool, and it is about our friends over at the Lucids. I noticed you were um, drinking you guys- out of a Lucid uh, water water tank there. Y- yeah, so <laughs> I can't say about uh, how I got this, but I may <laughs> may have you know visited someone that had one of these and let me have one. So. <laughs> Um, they they have they have good swag. I'll say that. So, if that's any indication about the company. But, uh, Lucy just put out. By the way, the, here's the rendering of it. Have you guys seen this before? This is like the mm-hmm. skeleton diagram. Mm-hmm. You can kind of see the body. Um, you know, it kind of shows all the exposed bits and all that fun stuff. Uh, and you can see the battery modules and all that. Well, it turns out the 517 mile estimated EPA range comes to us on a hundred is this the, even the right article how bad am i we're all terrible at this. <laughs> uh, there, there it are, is yep. uh, it comes on 113 kilowatt hours uh, of a battery pack so and this is confirmed this is from their website isn't it confirmed correct wow so if you guys remember uh you know some of the the people that were very skeptical of their 517 mile EPA range thinking they put a massive battery pack in there it actually comes out to be only 113 kilowatt hours which is about 13 kilowatt hours higher than uh yeah. the longest range Tesla Model S. Yeah. Now, if you do the math on that as I like to do <laughs> and you make little little shapes with it, you can see that essentially uh, per kilowatt hour, yep. the Lucid Air is getting 4.6 miles. So someone convert that, but you know, 4.6 miles. Whereas the Model Three is at 4.3 miles, and the Model S is at four. Um, so this is talking about efficiency, like how far can you travel on one kilowatt hour of energy? And it beats it. And 0.3 may not sound like a lot, but it's actually kind of a lot. <laughs> that um, is, you know, and and so yeah, so like the Model Three doesn't actually it's this is number two on the list because it's more efficient than the Model S uh, by point. Model S has a bigger though. battery, though, to make it have a f- longer. Correct. The Model range. S has a bigger battery and is still incredibly efficient. So you know, yeah. So, so that, do we that's know, how it shakes out? Do we know how they're able to get this kind of efficiency? Is it is there something in the engineering or the the drag coefficient or? More it, to come. Uh, okay. Well, no, I mean, because I was wondering, because like in, with with Tesla's, where I was talking about the zero to sixty, it's got this you know power output, but you know maybe theirs is not yeah. so like off the line kind of thing, but it's got more efficiencies to it. Um, let me see. Okay, uh, on their website, I'm just trying to read uh, a sculpted 113 kilowatt hour battery pack that doesn't really um, <laughs> tell me much. Uh, according to it's Peter weird. Rollinson, the CEO, CTO, and the former chief engineer at Tesla that designed and built the S and X. Uh, so a guy that definitely knows his stuff. Um, he has a quote here saying that it's relatively easy to achieve more range by adding progressively more batteries, but gaining what he calls dumb range. That way increases uh, that way increases weight and cost and reduces interior space. Lucid Air has mm. achieved its remarkable range whilst, 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 <laughs> I don't know, uh, also reducing battery <laughs> size, also <laughs> reducing battery size through its in-house technology resulting in breakthrough overall vehicle level efficiency. So he's not really like telling you exactly what the bits are, but but I, I'll just point out the key, I think, in that statement is reducing battery size. So when you think of a battery, there's a lot of components in the battery, right? The cells, uh, the, 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 the bus bars, and, and all the other bits that make the modules and, and which make up the whole pack, and the cooling and cooling. all those kind of bits. Here they're saying that they they're able to basically fit it all inside because they're able to make the batteries more I guess energy dense like not not the cells themselves but like more cells in a smaller space and um, if you look at the size of the car and compare it to other cars it's actually smaller than the Model S not by a lot but by some um, so it's I, I guess like all of this said anyone that was skeptical about them. Having seen it up close, I'll just say Peter Rawlinson is a is a damn genius, and uh, it makes sense that their technology here would be really really impressive. And uh, obviously, I'm going to be you know their their official unveiling is September 9th, so more to come on that. But super cool that they were able to pull that off, and I think I think it's cool because it sets it sets a new a new bar, a new standard for what's possible. And 
I mean, battery day is coming up from Tesla. So you just know, like, this is the competition that we all should love because yes. what we're talking yeah. about is just new levels of efficiency. Just and winning. even if this, co- yeah, like, like, it's just better for us consumers. You know what I mean? Yeah. These kind of like pissing contests are fantastic for us. And in the end, <laughs> like, that means the normal version of this car, because I imagine this one's going to be pretty expensive, um, you know, will be fantastic. So, yeah. So I still have two questions. Number one, remind me, okay. Um, the history with like Lucid, they kind of like, they went under radar. They actually went like bankrupt, right? For a little bit. And then did they, like, yeah. what's the history with Peter and Lucid? Like how long has Peter been with them? Has he been with them since this rebuild or like, what's, I, I was curious like, about that too. Yeah. Yeah. Can you remind us that a little bit? Cause uh, hold on. it feels like just... they, they had that unveil in like 2017 where they had that LIDAR on the hood and it really, you uh, know, and they were breaking records for zero to 60 supposedly and all this stuff. And yeah, that was sudden, 2000. I think they officially became a company in 2007. So like when did Tesla become a company? 2008 or something like that? Like, yeah. like they've been around for a long time. Um, yeah, they unveiled something. I think that was 2016 or 2015. They unveiled like the Lucid Air and they had all this hype. It was the Tesla killer, whatever. And then if, from my understanding, they had some financing issues, you know, solvency, all those kind of problems. And then I believe The Verge reported that the Saudi Arabian Wealth Fund, mm. uh, if that's the right term, like their state fund for things, came in and supplied them with all, all the money they needed to to become, you know, to, to come back to life. Um, and since then, you know, yeah, Peter Rollinson is now the CEO, CTO. I don't know when he first got involved. It might be out there somewhere. Uh, but yeah, he's the guy that, that did the S and X. So you just know what they're he doing is going to be totally legit. You know, I think right. the other question is like, cause like, like you can, and you know, to be a successful EV company, it takes more than just those bits. Right. But those I find are the hardest bits. Like if you look at very successful car companies and how bad they are at making batteries and powertrains, it's like Lucid is at least starting from a very good place of like incredible, uh, very well engineered uh, EV parts. Then it's a matter of, okay, well, now let's make a beautiful car and let's have a service network and let's have a charging thing. And you know what I mean? All the other parts of like making it as a car company. Um so yeah, so so they came out real early, real strong, went underground for a while. I believe it was all financing related. Came back uh, because I I think the Saudi Arabian Wealth Fund is what The Verge reported. And then now Peter Rawlinson is the one leading the helm. I, I kind of look at him, I, I think he's a genius. I think he's very good at what he does. I, I do wonder though if they needed a, another person to really be like the face of the company that that is the one out there being the kind of cheerleader and he he does the thing he's best at, which is the engineering side, which is exactly how I feel about Tesla. I mean, I think you couldn't have a better person than Elon being the face of the company, but but at some point you kind of need someone that's like a really good business person to just kind of like run the company uh, <laughs> and let him do what he's best at. So I, I feel like I wonder if there might be some future there where you have either someone else come in that is like, okay, this is the person. Peter Rawlinson really runs it and does all the engineering, is in charge of basically the products that are getting made. But here's the person that is really good at, at your, you know, CNBC press conference kind of, kind of person. Mm-hmm. I don't know. But I mean, I think they're set up really well, and and, and I, I really have high hopes for them based on what they've announced and, and based on everything else I've seen. Yeah, well, when when Tim, when you were asking a second ago about their history, I was I was kind of thinking the same thing, and and more than anything, just impressed that they just kind of kept going throughout all the 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 uh, setbacks and and changes over the, the industry and everything like the, the fact that they're at, at, at this point where they can reveal the, the car that they're actually going to be putting out there and it's got these crazy specs and it's super competitive probably isn't going to be for most people price wise but still an impressive car i mean it, I, it's good for them I'm, I'm excited for them definitely but the the question the ultimate question is the part two of my question is when is this actually like what is the feasibility of this actually hitting market actually getting like where are they at in that process do they i forget do they have a full-blown factory they do right they have a factory do they have a yes. dealership network what's their solution and and when are they expecting to start making deliveries it's a fair question i i think i think they've announced spring of next year is when they're hoping for deliveries the unveiling is this this the 9th of <clears throat> september so i think that's when they'll be taking 
uh, orders. orders. I don't know if they ever took orders before. Are they, are they taking them now? I'm, I'm actually not even sure. Um, yeah, but in terms of a, a, a dealer network, I don't think that's going to be a thing. Uh, they do have some stores that are popping up, like the one I went to is in Beverly Hills, and it's like a store, you know, you can see from the road. Um, so you'll you'll obviously have, you know, those kind of showrooms uh, out there. And then in terms of, uh, yeah, I, I think it's spring of next year is, is, is when, when they're looking to, to deliver them. If I remember from from what I saw online, and then, yeah, the question is is how many and how quick, right? Like how many of these mm-hmm. do they need to make uh, in order to? And their factory is in Arizona. Um, it's in Casa Grande, or I'm from Arizona, so I can say Casa Grande. And uh, it, there's there's <laughs> that girl on Twitter, Grandy. huh? Casa Grandy. Yeah, so there, okay. there's that girl on Twitter. It's Jessica Kirsch, I think it is, and she was the one that had that funny thing where she went to the Nikola factory. After their unveiling, oh. it was just like a dirt lot, no one there, nothing. And then she's like, "And see here, let's go look at another uh, EV startup in Arizona, Lucid." And she goes down, and there's like a giant building. There's like all kinds of trucks moving in and out. It's like, oh yeah, it's it's already there. Um, right. So yeah, so the factory's coming along. That they started that I think a couple years ago. So so they they have a real shot. They do. And and remember, they're uh, they're well, not remember, but. Their technology company, Ativa, which they own, um, powers Formula E. So in terms of like battery technology and what they've been doing, um, you know, you can kind of guarantee that the same stuff that the Formula E series is running on uh, is, is you know, going to be making its way into the consumer products in some way or, or another. So I know that Elon had said recently about, it, you know, Tesla won't do a, a racing division, but essentially... I don't think Lucid makes the cars or anything, but um, Just the, but they're doing the uh, you know the battery packs for all the Formula E stuff. So it's a level so, playing field there. Yeah, and I think do they do they talk about the sizes? <laughs> I believe prior to them doing this, they had to uh, in Formula E they had to like change cars midway through. Mm. Like do you? I don't know if you guys remember that, but it was like <coughs> like the battery pack wouldn't last long enough for a Formula oh, right. E race, and so they'd have to like switch cars. <laughs> Yeah, they have, like, and- another one fully charged up, and now they don't. Uh, but apparently mm-hmm. the races aren't super long. It's not like a NASCAR, you know, seven-hour race or something. It's like a 45 minutes or something like that. Mm. Still having a battery last for 45 minutes while getting just absolutely, like, pummeled like that is pretty Hammered, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and yeah. talking about in- insane performance and all that, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, it looks like they are taking reservations, cool. but I don't think they've announced pricing Yeah, they yet. have $1,000 reserve. Fully yeah. refundable. I I gotta say, twenty twenty one is gonna be an exciting year for for proper Tesla competition, and I say proper in the forms of like, like legitimate, especially new startup. You know, because there's been so many that are trying to compete in Tesla killer and stuff, and I'm so sick of that term. Every yeah. mainstream manufacturer that's made a Tesla killer, where are they now? Half of them are already canceled. You know, like you can't yep. even get your hands on them or whatever. So I'm just really happy to see like Lucid Air is competing properly with tesla the thing that i and, see too and the rivians are properly competing with tesla and once they get on market yeah like, that's going to be a big deal well and, and both of those are good examples of where um they kind of fit an area that isn't well served by tesla already right so obviously trucks well i right. know tesla now has a cyber truck coming out but they have to build a giant factory first so that'll be a little while yep. Point being, you know, Rivian came out with the truck like no one else was doing trucks. So, yeah, you're totally wide open. That landscape's r- ready for you. Lucid is making a sedan, which obviously Tesla already has a couple I- I- I cars in that category. But th- I think their pitch is really like that luxury thing, right? Mm-hmm. Like all the materials, everything being super, super high end, everything inside. So, you know, it's going to be more expensive. But this has been a complaint by a lot of Tesla owners on the higher end side for a long time is like, mm-hmm. yeah, the car is incredible. It's like nothing else. But, you know, some of these finishings, this is all kind of like like basic level plane yeah. type stuff. Um, and so, so yeah, so I think that there is a market here for people that want the higher end, the more luxury type type products. Uh, I don't know what, what Lucid's future lineup looks like, but I would imagine if they're smart that they would want to inter- introduce other kinds of vehicles. I think there's a rumor that they might have an SUV, but uh, I don't know anything about that. So yeah, it'd be cool to see, but it, it both Rivian and Lucid to me seem like high chance of success 
which as someone that's mm-hmm. a fan of this whole movement is this is just really exciting yeah mm-hmm. so next year is going to be really great so you already ordered your rivian correct because i saw the video on that so so tim I i'm going to put the question that. to you if you had well not had but if you were to buy a non-tesla ev what would you want a non-tesla ev yeah oh okay so i would say that i leave. i and <laughs> I, I think that the rivian truck is extremely appealing like i don't i've never been a pickup guy but seeing the overland options with the pickup with like the you know a big tent that comes off the bed and and like the kitchen that pulls out from that i mean that is properly cool mm. uh i think that's awesome that like actually makes me excited and like i I actually really want this. Um, but but also, I, I have to say Lucid is like, if they can deliver and if they can start to get, the thing that I, I'm most excited about with Tesla right now is their network, you know, the supercharging network and the autopilot stuff that I just see a lot of potential there. Um, I think they'll be the first to actually have proper, realistically, like more self-driving. So 100%, that's, yeah. that's the reason why I'm like a little bit less, like I love, those are the things that are big. I do a lot of road trips. So whoever can provide me the, the safest, best autopilot options and the best networking, I I got to go with that still. Um, so, so Lucid's not quite as appealing to me in those senses, but the car itself, I think, otherwise is mm-hmm. equally as appealing to me as as any Tesla. Mm-hmm. And in some ways, the the looks and the, the interior are like way more appealing to me. Yeah. Yeah. Am, what about am you, I Joe? the only person that's excited about the Polestar 2? <laughs> <laughs> I, yes, you are. <laughs> am, but am I though? I, I like it. I think it looks pretty cool. I, I mean, the, the range could I, be better, but you know. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I'm well, excited again that it seems to be a proper a proper EV. You know, that's what I'm most excited about. I don't know if I'm more excited about it than you know what else is coming because there's a lot of good things. But yeah. I think the Lotus one is kind of also something that doesn't get talked about at all. But you guys, I think we we did it before. Do you remember looking at this? Remember. Wasn't that just the Tesla Roadster, <laughs> the first one? Yeah. Well, this is their. I believe this is their. Uh, their. So we're talking toys at this point. Yeah. 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 I mean, you're talking. Yeah, yeah. It seems like all the new hypercars are all electric now because it's just. It's true. Yeah. It's just more yeah. a higher zero to sixty. You know, a lot of instant torque. The Polestar. Torque and- the, what has what Polestar I think really has going for it is the design and it's a it's a very is is it Swedish it's like it's Volvo some it's skin, an offshoot of Volvo yeah so yeah, so, so so great um s- such such a good car but the charging network is the thing that I think they've missed mm-hmm. on but yeah for now I like the design of it you know, it looks it looks nice and high it looks end nice. and classy with their, it looks classy. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this clip from our show. If that's just not enough for you and you want to watch the full episode, you can go to olfpod.com slash YT. And if you want more from us, you can consider becoming a Patreon member. You'll get early access to episodes. You can join our awesome community. You can actually watch us record live and get your name in the credits by going to olfpod.com slash Patreon. So thanks everyone for watching. Check back every Friday for new clips here and new episodes on the main channel. Thanks, everybody.